Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily. I have been doing this channel for five years now and it's actually been 10 years since I left uni and I was an unemployed graduate and I kind of started this business. So I thought it would be good to do like an old school YouTube sit down chatty video. I love these videos when I'm sat drawing. So hopefully you will enjoy it too. But I thought I would do like a deep dive into the past 10 years and take you on the journey of where my career has taken me, the failure the ups, the downs, all the things to get me where I am today. So we are gonna go back to 2013 when it all started. I want you to get cosy. If you are drawing, if you're working and listening to me in the background, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear at what point of the journey you found me, whether you are new, whether you've been with me since the start, please let me know in the comments below. I would absolutely love it. So I am a chatterer, I won't lie, but I have made notes. So if I do look down, it's because I don't want to forget anything and it's been a long 10 years. We've done lots. I've done my best as well to try and find as many pictures and old Instagram posts and all the things to pop up on the screen to show you to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. But we are going to go back 11 years to 2013. That is when I graduated from uni. So I went to uni in Bournemouth and I studied computer animation arts. I really, my dream was to work at Pixar, was to work at Disney. I was obsessed, actually obsessed with buying the DVD of the Disney films and I wouldn't watch the film, I would go to the behind the scenes content. I wanted to watch the artists, I wanted to see the character designs, I wanted to watch how they built the story, like all the things, I was obsessed with it. I applied to Disney when I was like 12, I remember trying to like log on somehow and like, <laughs> I don't know, I was just, whether I was delusional or just really motivated, I don't know what that was. I was desperate to work at Disney. My degree is in computer animation arts. What I realised when I did that course, yes, I have a degree in it. Uh, I think I got a 2-1 in the end. Anyway, what I realised is I'm not a very good animator. So I'm like in love with the idea of animation and how it's done and the process of animation, but I am not very good at doing the thing. And that came to a head when I graduated and I was trying to find a job because I moved back to Manchester where my mum was living. I didn't want to move to London with friends and do that. I wanted to move back to Manchester where animation studios are, there's not many of them. So I applied to all of them. I wasn't a very good animator. I just felt like I was a bit meh at everything. So I just applied everywhere and was rejected from everywhere. So what I decided to do was I decided to buy a drawing tablet. I'd used the drawing tablet at uni for projects, but I didn't kind of have my own. So I went to Argos, I got a Wacom tablet for like 50 quid and I just started drawing and I started uploading it to Facebook and I had an Instagram page at that point, I think, but I think I was mainly posting to Facebook and Tumblr at this point. And I was just drawing, 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 drawing. Whatever I could do, draw, I was doing. I'll put some on screen and some examples of those early drawings. Um, so I was never like, taught officially how to draw digitally. I just learned on the job. I remember what I did was, I was really trying to find like local stories in the paper and things. And I was like illustrating them and I was posting them to Facebook in the hopes that like people would find it funny in the local town. So we had a Matalan open. <laughs> a Matalan a store open in our town. Apologies, the dog is really snoring. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> we had a we had a Matalan store open at the end of 2013, I seem to remember. And I did an illustration of like a family going into Matalan and I put it on Twitter, I think at the time. Tumblr, I think Matalan commented back on Twitter and then that became a thing. And I think a friend of a friend worked at a local paper, newspaper, and they saw it and they invited me in for a meeting. Well, this for me was just insane, as you can imagine. I was so excited. I went down to the local newspaper and I sat in the editor's office and he was like, um, yeah, I think you should do, I think you should do a drawing every week for the newspaper. Take a story from the newspaper and you can every week have your own section in the newspaper. I was absolutely buzzing. They were going to pay me £20 a week to do one of these drawings. And um, I, I was like, yeah, I was all over it. So every week I was reading the paper, I was coming up with ideas, I would submit the drawing for them and every week it, it was in the local paper. So that was my first kind of experience of being a paid illustrator in industry. Um, it doesn't sound very exciting but for me 
who was being rejected left, right and centre for work was a dream, <laughs> absolute dream. So we move into 2014, I have started my weekly cartoonist slot in the local newspaper. I also decided to start doing a daily drawing challenge. So I, every single day, uploaded a drawing to Tumblr, to Instagram at this point. Yeah, I think I was uploading to Instagram. They were just like little drawings, but every day I was posting these drawings. I created my first logo, which if I have it still, I will put it on the screen and I made my Etsy shop. So the plan was that I was gonna sell like postcards. I think I did like little bookmarks. I started doing tote bags with like people's names on it. I bought like iron on transfers and I was like doing all of this. And to be honest, I wasn't making any sales from Etsy. It was all like posting to Facebook and like my mum's friends buying from me and my, my aunties buying from me, you know? So that's how it started. I did my first event in like the May time, my first ever like craft fair, but I was like drawing live, I seem to remember. So it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know what the situation was there, but it was just my first experience of doing it. And at this point I was starting to dabble in doing um, customized portraits. So people were starting to like the illustrations I were doing. And because I was doing daily drawing challenges, I was actually getting better quite quickly. Like you could visibly see every day I was improving. Um, and I still have all of these on Instagram, by the way, you can scroll back 10 years and you'll be able to find them. But I was starting to get people messaging me saying, hey, can you draw me? Can you draw my family? Uh, can you draw our wedding picture? And I started to say yes. I was charging like 10 pounds per, per portrait, but I was starting to do them and I was doing them through Etsy. I was telling people to pay me through Etsy. So that helped get my Etsy shop going. And yeah, I was starting to get quite busy with those. In the summer of that year, because I was posting on Twitter and I was posting on Tumblr, an animation studio in Manchester found me and they were only a small little studio, but they took a massive risk and they sent me a message and asked if I was, I wanted to work on a project for Nestle cereal. And I remember being, I just cried. I was so, this was like huge to me um, because I was still being rejected for every job I was applying for. So for them to offer me that, and I can't remember, I remember being paid like a day rate. I don't know if it was like a hundred pounds a day or something, but I remember that was like the first big thing I invoice like I remember learning how to write an invoice on that project if I can find the advert that I worked on I will leave some clips I will leave anything I can on the screen but looking back I'm like oh Emily you could have done so much better than that but 10 years ago I was such like a baby artist I was so new I'm really proud of what I did and it was great for me and my little portfolio that I was trying to build so I'm posting every day on Instagram. I'm applying to every studio, left, right, and center. Um, I am starting to apply for, I'm like broadening the field a little bit here. I'm running out of studios. So I'm applying for like printing companies. I'm applying, ev I applied everywhere. I was being rejected. I was like living at home with my mom. And at this point she was still with my stepdad and he was really pressuring and sort of saying like, you need to get a job now. Um, and I remember the conversation being like, do I go go on to benefits? Like at what point do I do that? I felt like if I go on to benefits, yes, it will help me, but is that me giving up on this dream that I have? A few of my uni friends were also struggling and I remember one of them messaging saying like, she's going in for benefits. And I just remember it just being this discussion. And while I was deciding that, I got the dream email, the email you wanna get after nearly a year of trying to find work out of uni. And that is a studio, an animation studio in Manchester asking if I wanted to be an intern. I was elated. This studio in Manchester was starting up a children's TV show and I was being offered a, an, an internship. It was an unpaid internship, but it was an opportunity to get in and just kind of start and I did. So I started working there in kind of the July of 2014, something like that. In my head, I thought it was gonna be this bigger thing. I think I thought, oh my God, I'm going to work at a Disney, that kind of level. It wasn't, it was very small studio with three or four staff members. And then there was a few of us unpaid interns that were coming in to help with this project. But I loved it. I met some absolutely amazing people working there. Within a couple of months, I, don't, I think even by the Christmas, I was a paid employee. I went in as like a, an intern for like modeling and like creating characters. And by the Christmas, 
I was sat at a big Cintiq drawing tablet. I was an illustrator, the concept artist, designing the characters. So that daily drawing challenge that I started at the start of the year to by the end of the year being a concept artist at an animation studio, that just shows that drawing every single day can make your skills improve massively. Um, so yeah, so that was 2014. So now we're moving into 2015 and 2016. I've grouped these two together because these were the years of just hard work. I was at that studio. I was I, looking back like I did re I was doing really well I'd worked my way up I was kind of the lead concept artist there so a project would come in and it would be my job to design the characters do the storyboards like I was busy and I was working hard and doing whatever I could now I was doing portraits on the side still because I really enjoyed doing that and I was posting them on Instagram and things. 2015 was the year I got engaged. So uh, I got engaged to my husband in Mexico and we were just enjoying life, you know, like things were going really good. 2016 uh, was the year I bought my house. So thanks to that job in the studio, I worked my butt off, saved money and I bought this house that I'm sat in now. Um, so it was just a wonderful couple of years. I worked on some great projects and just had some lovely times with some lovely people. So then we come to 2017. So 2017 is when life flipped upside down for us. In February of 2017, sadly, my niece died. We lost her in some terrible circumstances. But what that did for us as a family is it brought us together and it made me, me and my husband, my now husband, at the time he was my fiance, really start to like think about life <laughs> because she was very young and she had her whole life ahead of her and um, just all the things that we were doing, yes, we seemed comfy, we seemed happy, but we made us question things. So like up until that point, we, when someone asked, are you having kids? We were like, oh no, no, we're not having kids. Um, but when that happened, something in my brain switched and I was like, no, I very much would like to have children, especially with you, the person that I love, who, because life is so short, I could lose you tomorrow. Um, we, I want to have children with you. And it was the first time I'd ever had this thought. I was also starting to think about work. Work had started to go quiet. Um, the animation kind of part of the job was dwindling and I was sort of just turning into like an office manager. I was answering the phones, I was answering emails and I was comfortable because I was making, I was paying the mortgage and like we were able to go on nice holidays but I wasn't fulfilling the creative in me and when that happened in the February I was just like oh you know is there more for me out there? I think it all came to a head when I was remember I was sat at my desk and I got an email on LinkedIn and it was from another studio, another animation studio in, ta in the area. And it just sort of said, are you open to other opportunities? And because I'd been having these thoughts, I thought, yeah, maybe I am. I felt really bad because this job that I was in, it was my first ever job and to having to leave it, I felt bad. I did feel really bad. But it was my husband that was like, you need to put yourself first and you have these dreams and these goals and you can stay here, but you're not doing it for you. You're doing it to make your boss, your friends happy to stay. So I didn't go behind my boss's back or anything like that. Who was a friend it is still a friend. Um, I was very honest and said, look, I've been approached. And I think he knew I wasn't happy. And he sort of, I think he was very sad, but he gave me my blessing and said, go, go and meet them. So I went for an interview and it was for a TV show and it would be a character designer on a TV show. And um, it was just kind of all the things I wanted to do, you know? So, so I did the art test, I did the interview and I got the job. The problem was, what I'd not factored in was that the commute to get there was about an hour and a half. And when I went for the interview, it took me forever to get there. And I remember ringing my husband afterwards and my mum and just sort of said, yes, the job's great, but will I be miserable when I get home from work? And we came to the conclusion that yes, I probably would. <laughs> Um, it doesn't matter how great the job is, the, that commute was too much and I bought this house so I didn't want to move and my husband has a business right here so I didn't want to move. So I turned the job down. Now I turned the job down but because I was offered that 
because they'd approached me, it made me think, no, I'm quite good at what I do. There's going to be opportunities out there for me. So I handed in my notice at work and I decided I was going to go freelance and I was going to try and make it work from home. <laughs> so I went on holiday. I had a big holiday booked. I went to New York and Florida and we did that holiday. And when I got back from that holiday, I was on my own. I was here on my own and I had to figure it out. Now, the good thing was I was busy with portraits. Portraits were coming in constantly. I was constantly getting emails and I was able to charge. I don't even know how much I was charging at this point, but I was, I, it wasn't £10 a portrait anymore, right? I was able to charge what I felt at the time I was worth. And it was going okay, like I was doing okay. The job I interviewed for where the commute was quite long, they were never able to find somebody. So they eventually got in touch with me a couple of months later and was like, hey, I know you can't come into the office to do that job, but do you want to do it remotely? <laughs> yes. So I ended up doing that job, but I did it from home. So I worked on that for a little bit and I was doing portraits and things were going okay. At this point, I was working in the room next door. I'd upgraded to a, a Wacom Cintiq tablet. I was trying to take it more seriously. And we were also trying for a baby. Now it's probably not the best of situations to be trying for a baby when you are like, just quit your job, but we, it was all we could think about. It was all I could think about. Um, so we just, we were trying for a baby. Like I can't deny it. We, that's what we were doing. So now we come into 2018. Now everything online looked rosy. It looked great. But behind the scenes here was stressful. I was really struggling with money. Uh, bills were being missed or late. Like the mortgage. I just remember every single month being in tears and it being a stress. We'd been trying for well over a year to have a baby. That wasn't happening. I just felt like everything I wanted, it just wasn't happening. I wasn't working in animation. The freelance project had ended. Portraits were happening, but I was very unhappy doing them. It was stressful. It was just hard. 2018 was hard. I will not deny it. It was very, very, very hard. I think it got to like May time. Again, I got a LinkedIn message. Animation Studios, they liked LinkedIn, <laughs> looking back. But I got a LinkedIn message from somebody who said, hey, we've been trying to fill this role at the studio for ages and no one, they, they, they don't seem to be able to fill it. You should apply. And it was for a 2D character and prop designer for another studio that was in Manchester. This was a big one. It told me back because I thought, oh, I didn't think I was going to do this again. I decided to apply for it. I was sent the art test pretty quickly. I did it and um, I was called in for an interview. That went really well. And so at the end of May of 2018, I was offered a job. I was offered a job in an animation studio being a designer on a TV show. I mean, this was the dream. I said to my husband, I need to make a decision here. We're not happy, we're stressed, money's tight. This baby thing doesn't seem to be happening. So I think let's just stop all of it. Let's just stop all of it. I'll go into work. Uh, this contract was an eight, nine month contract because it was just like until the show was done, you know? I will just do this for eight, nine months and then we can figure out the plan from there on. Whether I stay or find another job or if I try freelancing again, just all the things, but let me just do this job. I can do this job, I'm good at this job. So I did. So June, June the th third or something like that, I started in this studio and it was amazing. I loved it. I worked on a show called Nella the Princess Night, um, which was a Nickelodeon show at the time. And I just felt like for the first time, I felt like I'd been working in the animation industry for a long time, but this was like the first time I was at a proper studio with lots of staff and it just being this well-oiled machine and I knew it was gonna be on telly. Like all the projects I'd worked on in the past were all like, mm, we're gonna kind of create some characters that we're gonna to pitch to Netflix and hopefully it'll become a show one day. And I just felt like I'd worked on stuff like that and nothing had happened. Whereas this was gonna be on telly. It was season two of Nella. So I knew it was legit. Fast forward two weeks, I'm two weeks into the job, right? Things are still new. I had some insanely talented artists all around me. I felt like imposter syndrome being there. But then at the same time, I was like, no, I got this job. Like I'm good at this. Two weeks into the job, I wasn't feeling too good. <laughs> I was feeling a bit sick and a bit like, mm, I don't feel right. I decided to take a pregnancy test. <laughs> I think you know what's coming. I found out I was pregnant. 
two weeks in to the dream job, about a month after deciding we weren't going to try anymore. <laughs> so I was obviously elated. Me and my husband were elated. I was also absolutely terrified that I'm going to have to go in and tell my brand new bosses who have just hired me on a nine month contract that I'm going to give birth in nine months. <laughs> I was absolutely terrified and I remember googling like at what point do you tell your boss you're pregnant and there's like no right or wrong some people are like tell them as soon as you find out some people are like you don't need to tell them until you're like six months pregnant but that I couldn't keep like I felt sick I couldn't even go into the canteen because it made me feel physically sick the smell so people were gonna know and I couldn't keep it from anybody so thankfully my bosses, there was two, my, my desk was right by the two bosses and they had like glass offices and they were both female. And I just remember, and I knew one of them was a mum and I was just like, I'm just gonna go and tell them. I'm just gonna be really honest and say, I am pregnant. I have just found out I am pregnant. Um, and I did that. <laughs> it was really funny because I had to walk past everyone's desk and tap on her door and go in. And I bet everyone was in there thinking, what is she going in the big boss's office for? Um, Cause I couldn't tell anybody. I couldn't, I didn't want to tell anybody. So I told the boss, she was fab. I, she was fab to me anyway, really supportive. I was just like, I didn't know I was pregnant when I interviewed. I'm, I would have told you. I was like, I've just found out. <laughs> and I just said like, these are my dates of like when I'm due. I was due on the, uh, February 22nd so I was like you know we'll make it work and they were so great but it changed that job for me because I was like doing my best I worked my hardest on that job but I was growing a baby and I did it all with my big baby bump like I, I remember having to go to um HR like called me in for like meetings every so often I think it's like policy to do like this checklist of being like, you know, how's your desk position? How's your chair? Do you need more breaks? And I had to like sign this form. And I just remember them having to come in and like height, like raise my desk up so that the, my bump could sit underneath it. So because I was drawing over a tablet, it was really awkward. And I just, it was just such a lovely time. Um, and like when I see that show on telly, and I see my name in the credits at the end, like it gives me a warm feeling to know that I was pregnant when I made that show. So anyway, I worked through the whole of that job pregnant. <laughs> so now we are into 2019. I am heavily pregnant at the start of this year. And on the 1st of February, my contract on that job ended. I fulfilled all of my obligations in that job. I worked on like 52 episodes, designing characters, designing props. You can go and watch Nella season two, wherever, I don't know, but you'll see my name on the credits on all the episodes, apart from episode one, because I started a week later than everyone else. And I left on February 1st. It was very, very bittersweet. And two weeks later, my friends, February 15th, I gave birth to Luca. So Luca was born and it was, just the most joyous moment of my life. I, oh, I could do a whole video on how wonderful that moment was. Um, but the, the truth of it was, and no matter how beautiful becoming a mum is, the honest truth was I had no job. We had no savings because everything that I made in that job paid for prams, paid for all the things I needed. It was an exciting time but also a very scary time like it was always in the back of my mind of what are you going to do with your life what are you going to do the studio that I just left had sort of said to me look if you want to come back there is a job waiting for you so I knew I had that but a part of me didn't want to go back to that it was really long hours and I just having this little tiny baby in my arms I just could not imagine being away from him so I just tried not to think about it I just kept thinking right we'll deal with that in six months time and that that was just the constant. So I was just being a mum and while I was at home on my own and doing the feeds and doing all the things, I started to watch YouTube and I, on YouTube, I, I remember searching something like uh, illustrator, uh, vlog, I don't know, I, I just these keywords and the people that popped up just changed my life. <laughs> 
changed my life. I've talked about Catherine Catnip on this channel before. She was somebody I used to watch when I'm holding Luca and I just, oh my God. She lit a fire inside of me that I thought was dwindling. And I was watching her and I just thought, wow, you can actually like pay your bills with your drawings. I just thought my future was gonna be working for other people because I tried doing it before on my own and it didn't work. So watching her not only like just achieve everything she was achieving and it still is, she was hiring her family, like it was just insane. And so I was watching her, there was loads of people I was watching. And I just remember thinking, I can do this. I Yeah, I've got a newborn, but nothing can stop me. Like I, why not? Why can't I do it? So it got to April. And at this point, the office door had been closed. I'd not been in there uh, and not really I've not really been in there since 2018 when I when I got the, the animation job. But when Luca was six weeks old, I decided I'm going to open that door again. We're going to go in and we're going to tidy the office and we're going to see what happens. That's where this business, that's the, that is the moment it started, right there. I decided that if this was going to work and we were going to one day hopefully be able to pay the bills with income from whatever we decide to build at this point I don't even know what it was I need to like get a handle on the brand how it's gonna look um so I decided to just do an overhaul and I updated my branding and I started to post on Instagram every single day I think I even did a post that was like today's the day we're starting and you can again go back on my Instagram you can find those posts and you can literally see the shift of when I started with the colours and the design and, and everything. And I just started posting my desk and like behind the scenes and things I was buying and I just started. And then in the June, so one month in, I started doing studio vlogs. So I think I'd been doing a few like little topical top tip videos um, at this point and just making a start. But in the June, I was like, no, now we need to start documenting with actual studio vlogs. And I did that in June. I created my first product around then, which was like a weekly desk pad, which I dreamed of designing. So that was like one of the first products I'd done. And yeah, I just started. I didn't have like a plan. I just was like, oh, let's make a product and see. And by the August, I did my first big event. So this was like a big festival that I did. I had quite a few products there. I'd made my own cards, I'd made prints, I'd done some badges. And all of this was, I, I was just documenting it every single week with my little three month old on my lap. I just, I documented it all. And then that brought me to the November of 2019. First of November, 2019, I launched Patreon. I knew my maternity pay was gonna end around October time. And I needed something that was gonna replace it. Now maternity wasn't much, so maybe 600 pounds a month, something like that. So I was just like, right, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do to make sure that I have that? I just obviously need more than that. But if I can replace maternity pay, it's a good start and we don't have to go back to a job. The goal was always to have build some kind of Patreon or community or something. And I did that. I did that on the 1st of November. And because I was posting every day from the May, I'd grown a following in those few months. I've made a few notes. In the May of 2019, when I started, I had a thousand followers on Instagram, which had kind of accumulated from the previous sort of six years on there and I had 30 subscribers on YouTube. So that's how I was in the May of 2019. And by the November, when I launched Patreon, I doubled my followers. So I had 2000 followers on Instagram and I had about 650 YouTube subscribers. So just if you're wanting to launch a Patreon, that's the sort of numbers I was at. 2000 followers, 6, 650 YouTube subscribers. And my goal for Patreon was that I just wanted 10 people to join. If I can get 10 people to join, then that shows me that this can work. <laughs> And I hit launch and by the end of the first month, I had 36 patrons, which, oh my days, if you, was absolutely mind blowing. And by the end of the following month, which was like the end of the year, I had 47 patrons. So 
Two months in, 47 people were, were supporting me on Patreon. I had a few things in the shop. I was making some sales on Etsy. Um, and so, yeah, I wasn't, I hadn't replaced my maternity, but it was going in the right direction. Like it was positive and I was happy. And I was, for the first time, I wasn't feeling like, terrified for the future. I was feeling super optimistic and super excited. So then we move into 2020. This was a wild year for me. By the March time, I am five months into Patreon and I was making about $500 a month. This was when Patreon was paid me in dollars. Now it pays me in pounds, but back then it was dollars and I was making $500 on Patreon alone. I reached a hundred patrons, so a hundred people in the first five months had joined me. I bought myself a camera and it was just, it was just the most exciting time of my life. Like I had a one year old and I was feeling confident in myself and my abilities and what I was building. I also did my first ever Kickstarter in that month and I made my first enamel pin, which obviously has turned into now like this love affair that I have with pins. And I also moved into this room. So this is the, so next door is the smaller office room. This was Luca's bedroom that I kind of took over. Um, and I just felt like I was growing and things were building. In March of 2020 also, was when this huge pandemic hit the world and we went into lockdown. We had another massive loss in our family um, of someone very young. And it was just like, all these things were happening and my husband had to close his business. So my husband was a personal trainer. He had his own gym, he had to close. So overnight, I remember the day where they came on the, you know when they used to do the uh, the COVID, like every night they would come on and tell you what the news is of the day. Um, and I remember the day when they said gyms had to close and this sort of like dark cloud came over us because I just knew in that moment, my husband who has lost his niece in the recent years, he's just lost his sister. This gym is like the thing that keeps him going. Like when he's struggling with things, he goes to the gym, like that's his place. And he had to close that. And it was absolutely terrifying. If you followed me during that time or if you're a patron during that time, you'll know it was so stressful. But overnight, I became the person that had to bring the money in. I went from having nothing to, Emily, you need to make this work now. So I did everything I could in 2020. I was like, right, people are at home. People are furloughed. People are miserable. What can I do to bring people together? I started doing Zoom calls to get people to come on, like come on Patreon and chat to each other and not feel alone. I launched um, markets, online markets for my patrons. Again, just to say thank you for being here and supporting me, but to also like give some hope and like something for us small businesses to do. And people were starting businesses, people that were furloughed. They were like coming over and just starting handmade businesses. 2020 20, when I tell you, was an absolutely insane year for me. So like I said in March, I was on fi I was making about $500, I had 100 patrons and I had about 2,000 YouTube subscribers. By the November of that year, so like one year on Patreon, I was making two and a half thousand dollars on Patreon and I had about 370 patrons. So in the space of how many months is that? Eight months my income shot up and obviously that was just an insane time for me we needed it as a family i felt like i'd done it like i'd, I'd actually done it it makes me emotional to think about because it just doesn't happen does it your dreams it, my dreams came true and it felt like it, it came true overnight and i had this one year old who and I just felt so proud of myself. I was so proud of myself. And um, in the October of that year, um, I was able to afford a studio. Now, I was desperate to get a studio um, because obviously this was Luca's bedroom and I, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to take up his space and um, I could afford to do it. And a part of me was just like, this is your dream. So I got my dream studio. If you have followed me for a while, I documented the whole process. It was gorgeous. It was a gorgeous, gorgeous space. It meant I could 
pack boxes without being in this cramped little space and um, I could go out to work which was nice and also around this time Luca started nursery so he was in nursery two days a week and I had a space I could go to and like work it was an amazing amazing time in business obviously the world was really struggling at this point Covid was it was the height of Covid we uh, lost family members it was really hard but I was like holding on to the hope that the business is going okay we're gonna be okay 2021 was a busy year a busy year in the shop um i had um i had money in the bank from like 2020 i invested in branding so all the branding kind of that you see now i had an animation done which is at the start of my youtube videos um like all of that i paid for that and that was really 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 exciting for me patreon kind of was steady at this point i wouldn't say it was declining but we weren't growing anymore so that crazy growth that i had in 2020 just flattened but that was fine it was okay i wasn't panicking about it i was just like right this is the norm now and it was just this constant that i had every month it was so amazing we were doing more of our eHarts markets they were doing really really well so that felt really good so 2021 unless i've missed something it was just kind of a gr it was a good year for me it was a really good year i did another kickstarter i had some products in the shop it was just a good steady year so then we move into 2022 this was another great year for me um i started the year with a kickstarter and this was i'd done quite a few kickstarters up to this point but this year matched the year where i had my biggest kickstarter i've ever had i've not even been able to uh to kind of beat it since and this was my fairy tale kickstarter it was a lot of pins it was a bullet journal it was washi tapes it was prints it was all the things and in four weeks i raised eleven thousand pounds if you'd have told 2019 me who had just had a baby that she was going to do that in uh, just a couple years later she would not have believed you and it still blows my mind now i've done two kickstarters since and have not been able to get anywhere near that so that was just a crazy year um i feel like i don't know what happened that year for me on kickstarter but it was absolutely incredible covid was still a thing but in-person events were starting to happen things were opening up again in the world so i was able to get out i met people um i started to be in some pop-up shops which was really exciting and then the other exciting thing that happened throughout this year was i was asked by locket loves who are a legging company if I wanted to design a legging collection with them. that When that email came through, oh my gosh, was I excited. She, Lucy, who owns that company, had been following me for a while. She liked what I was doing. This was just gonna be the most exciting project I had ever been a part of. So I worked on it throughout the whole year and in the November of 2022, we launched our legging collection and it did really, really well. I just want to say again, thank you to everybody who supported that project. Um, I, it was so fab. I loved it. I loved working on that project. So that was 2022. I feel like I'm just kind of uh, brushing past these years pretty quickly, but they were just good years. You know, we had some ups, some downs. All of it is documented on studio vlogs though, so you can go back and watch it all. So then we move into 2023, and this is where things took a change in the business so I started the year it started really well I got married at the start of 2023 so obviously we got engaged years and years ago um but we decided to get married in New York at the start of 2023 just us two we flew out just us two we didn't tell anybody we told our parents but we decided to get married in Central Park and it was just incredible absolutely amazing he my husband has been with me through all of this we've been together long before i even went to uni so um to just do that with like my favorite person <laughs> was just absolutely amazing to be perfectly honest at this point now the world is opening up the people that were starting businesses during covid they're back at work now so what do you do when you are back at work and you can start going out again and you can start going on holidays you drop the patreon of the person that's trying to help you with your small business. <laughs> so that's what I had. So to go from making like two and a half thousand pounds a month, which, you know, after paying rent and all the things, I still had a wage there, you know, and um, to go from that to now in the 2023, it had dropped to about one and a half thousand. I am so grateful for that on Patreon. It's so hard to reach those numbers on Patreon. But I had to be realistic and when I looked at the graphs and like how quick Patreon grew 
when I launched it to then like staying the same and now we were kind of dropping and we were dropping quick I was losing 50 patrons a month once you took the office rent off and all the expenses that come with or having an office um I wasn't making a wage anymore and it was really hard so I had to be realistic and I decided in the April of 2023 that I was gonna hand my notice in. I was gonna hand my notice in at the office and I was gonna move back home. Now, yes, money played a massive part in it, but also Luca was starting school. He, starting, he was starting school in the September and I really, my dream was to be able to walk him to school every day. And being able to work from home made that easier. So I handed my notice in, it was extremely sad. I was a very, I felt like I'd failed. I felt like I should have made this work. It was going so well in 2020. I should have kept that going. Like, why couldn't it have carried on? You hear these stories about people that just take off and like their life changes forever. And why didn't I do that for us as a family? Why I failed? And um, it took a lot of people telling me that, no, you just rode the wave of COVID. Like online businesses soared and yours did. And now it's gone to the level it probably would have been if COVID hadn't happened. You know, if like, if you look at the trajectory, the curve's still going up. You just had this blip in the middle where COVID made it really go up. And um, so then it made me feel a bit better. I stayed in the studio, I had to stay in for three months and I did Stationery Fest, which was a massive event in Manchester. Um, and I decided to, when I handed the keys back, I decided I was gonna have August off social media. I'd not, I'd been posting on social media pretty much every single day since that time in 2019 when I started. I've been on it non-stop. And um, I decided I'm gonna have a month off. Like I can do this. Patreon, now that I'm working from home, um, Patreon means I've, I've got my wage back. So I, I had the whole of August off and it was absolutely incredible. Luca started school in the September. I walked in, I, I still do, walk him to school every single day. And um, it was kind of a bittersweet ending to 2023. Uh, I was newly married, but I had lost my gorgeous studio. I was back working from home. Luca was starting school. And it was just this adjustment and change that I was going through. At the end of that year, I did a really exciting project. I worked with my friend Gemma at Birds of Villas Air and we did a candle collection, which I actually have here. Um, so I was doing projects, I was working on exciting things and I would never have dreamed like someone would ask me to do a collaboration like this a few years ago and now it's happening and it was just, it was just a lovely way to end the year. And that brings us to 2024. I am now working from home. We have rescued a dog who you might have seen in like previous videos. Luca is doing really well at school. Matt ended up closing his business. He closed it a couple of years ago and he's now employed again. He just co couldn't do the small business thing anymore. It was really hard. Covid really really affected him mentally and um, it was a huge stress. So he's back to working He's now employed and he's getting like a regular income and he's very happy. Patreon never sadly went back to COVID levels, but I just don't imagine that it ever will. Um, it's kind of, it's sort of stuck to like the 1.5 to 1.8K range. It, it fluctuates every single month. Um, but now that I'm back home, that's okay. You know, I don't have these huge like rent bills that I need to pay. I have about 330 patrons who have stuck with me. Like I'm so, so grateful. And I would love, honestly, I would love to do this video again in 10 years time. And I will let you know that hopefully it's taken off again. Fingers crossed. Just hit 30,000 followers on Instagram, which is a lovely milestone um to celebrate in like it's been five years since i had 1000 and it's been a, just a nice low steady climb and uh it's been fab i'm stocked in shops and i'm creating new products i've just i've just done a kickstarter again and i'm just waiting for all the products to arrive so it feels like nothing's changed i'm still the same person i was in 2019 sat in a little back bedroom just trying to make it work and yet so much has changed, you know? I feel more confident. I feel the future is bright and it's all gonna be good. I don't know what life has in store for me. I don't know how long this business can go on for. I'm not sure. All I can say is I just am so grateful to anybody who has followed along this journey, whether you have been watching my videos since I uploaded the first one in 2019 
or if you joined last week, just welcome. I hope this video, it might have been a long one, but so has 10 years. Um, I hope it's been like helpful to see um, that a journey isn't a straight line. It can have lots of ups and downs and you might be going down for a bit, but you'll go back up. You just got to keep at it. And um, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for the rest of the year. Thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions about anything I've talked about, any experiences I've had, or if you're going through something similar and you need help with it, leave it in the comments below. Thank you so much for being here. And here's to the next 10 years, yay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I will see you all very soon for the next video. Bye guys.